Welcome to my third vlog on coaching philosophy. I'm going to start by defining this and then explaining why it's so important for coaches. Caulfield and Geraghty's NSCA article defines it as a set of values, attitudes and beliefs that guide an SNC coach's practice daily. And this definition seems common amongst most papers. However, Cushion and Partington reviewed coaching philosophy literature, pointing out that scholars often describe more of a coaching ideology formed consciously and followed strictly, without accounting for the unconscious social influences which shape coaches. Therefore, philosophy will be open to change and development over time with experience rather than being a fixed ideology. Graham and Fleming's definition encompasses this, and so I went with theirs. The importance of forming and reflecting on your philosophy is that when you have a clear understanding of what your priorities are and why, you are able to align your daily actions with your philosophy to reach your desired outcome. With that in mind, my approach to the task was to read literature on existing coaching philosophy and frameworks and see how my values match up in order to solidify or improve my philosophy. I'll start by outlining my current values and beliefs and explaining how these influence my coaching practice on a daily basis. I'll then explain how my philosophy has developed over time and what has influenced it. And finally, I'll look at areas for future development and reflection. I also used Van Mullum and Brunner's 2013 paper on developing philosophy to guide me throughout the process. The key values I hold highest are professionalism, communication and commitment. I value professionalism as I aim to behave at the highest standards from showing up on time to generally being polite as these little details transfer to successful training sessions and improvement in other areas. In practice, this means showing up to my sessions early to set up and also ensuring safety in every session. Communication is also a key value, creating an open, honest and trusting environment where dialogue between the coach and athlete is welcomed. In daily practice, I give athletes opportunities to feedback throughout sessions on what they enjoy, find difficult or generally how they're feeling. And this information helps both athlete and coach to get more out of each session. Finally, commitment for me means consistently showing up fully prepared and giving high effort levels. I aim to set the standard for this by preparing detailed sessions and rehearsing them before delivery to athletes in the hope that they appreciate this and reciprocate the effort level. The belief that guides my philosophy is that I am responsible for creating and maintaining a training environment which develops athletes holistically in sport and life. This is why I take responsibility for carrying out my values in practice to create an environment where my athletes want to do the same. Through my reading, I came across Benny and O'Connor 2010 explaining the humanistic approach by coaches and how beneficial it can be for athlete development, so I looked into it further. Lyle defines the humanistic approach as a person-centred ideology that emphasises the empowerment of the individual towards achieving personal goals within a facilitative interpersonal relationship. I feel this aligns with my philosophy perfectly and summarises my beliefs and values with the addition of a clear goal for the earth. Benny and O'Connor also explain the ways in which this approach fits into a performance environment and enhances it, which further solidified my belief in this method of coaching. Moving on to how my philosophy has developed, I'll first mention that I've only been coaching clients and athletes for two years, so I'm still in the early stages of my journey. That being said, I learned huge amounts about dealing with clients as individuals when starting out as a personal trainer. Clients require lots of encouragement and motivation as you're often dealing with less experienced trainers rather than elite athletes. This developed the humanistic element of my philosophy. My background in semi-professional football has at times shown me how not to coach as the results-driven environment sometimes overlooks good communication and viewing the athletes as individuals. This causes demoralisation for athletes and despite getting initial results, it later causes burnout and high player turnover at these clubs. Finally, working with more athletes in the past year rather than general population clients has shown me the importance of combining the results-driven and humanistic approaches to develop rounded individuals who can achieve their goals without burning out. I plan to continue developing my philosophy, firstly by gaining more experience coaching in team settings and also by continuously learning. In summary, a coach's philosophy is malleable and so we should always consciously reflect on it to challenge what we know and continue growing.